Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Fujika Compact S. Uh, most websites say it's about 1970. Collectablend says it's about 1966. I tend to believe it's a little earlier because of what this has in common with some other cameras from Fujika. It's auto exposure or aperture priority mode using this selenium meter. Uh, there's no manual mode. It does have a coupled range finder. Uh, it's pretty easy to see in good light. Like most of them in not so good light, it's not so easy to see. Uh, it doesn't adjust, but it has parallax marks for when you're you know, at about a meter or so. Uh, it has a pretty sharp Fujinon 38 millimeter lens. Uh, it's f2.5 at widest stops down to f22. Uh, it focuses from about three feet, uh, 0.9 meters to infinity. Uh, like I said, you know, with the rangefinder or using uh, zone focusing, it does have good distance marks. It's a little bit hard to nail the focus, but when you get it right, it is really, really sharp. It's a good lens. Uh, the shutter, which you don't get to monkey with at all, uh, goes from a 30th of a second to 1 250th of a second. Have not found the manual for this camera, but the Compact 35 and the Fujika Half both have real similarities to it, and they have Sekosha shutters, so it's either that or a Citizen but it seems to be pretty accurate in this one. ISO choices are a little weird. It's this switch on the back, and it's, this one's a little stiff. Um, you just toggle it up and down until you hit the right speed. It goes from ISO 12 to ISO 200, so it's a little tricky trying to use fast modern film in this guy. And that also contributes kind of to my opinion that this is the older range of 66 to 1970. Has a cold shoe, but it has a PC socket here to the left below the lens. Interestingly, the frame counter is on the bottom, and while we're on the bottom, it has a nice metal tripod socket and the rewind button. The self timer is really weird, um, and it's like the Fujika half. This switch on the back for L and S, I'm pretty sure it means lock and start. So if you're locked, then it has this little clockwork winder around the film rewind, and make sure it's cocked, and then you slide it over to S, pretty loud clockwork motor, and depending on how much you wind it, there the shutter, the shutter just tripped. It, it goes up to about uh, 10 seconds. If you wind it less, it does less. It's kind of a guesstimate because there are no markings on it. This one is in pretty good shape. Um, the back is a little bit misaligned. I can get it open. These prongs that lock it shut, you just got to make sure they're in a little bit. But it has nice relief all around it, and amazingly the light seals are in decent shape. But it's got enough of an uh, inset that I think it would be pretty light tight, even if it wasn't uh, in good shape. Let's see if I can get this guy closed now that I said that. You just, when you're closing it, you also have to work this, at least on this copy of it. So it's kind of limited, being aperture priority or full auto, but it's a nice little range finder. Um, this is one I'm probably going to keep for sentimental reasons. Um, I got the last color image of my muse and favorite uh, model, my cat Zoe. So, who knows, I'll run some black and white through it, and I'll see you then.